Okay. Um, my name is Sue Fife. I'm the Director of the Information Management Section at Geoscience Australia, which is um, plays a role across the agency in coordinating data and information management and delivery, including library and records management services, but also our basically our long tail of data um, management and metadata management and delivery um, and data storage. In terms of information management cultural change, the principles are the same. So the, um, the case study that I did use from Geoscience Australia was one we'd already been through over 10 years in introducing electronics. Basically all the principles of, of changing information management are the same. We've actually started the planning stages over the last two years for um, also sharing um, organisational change only happens if a critical mass is reached in both numbers with management and the staff on board. The more people doing it, the more it becomes a culture of the agency, the more everybody gets involved. Um, um, which that quite a few actually do is that they run out of steam before the critical mass of staff are actually um, converted and they fail to actually continue to change or to continue to build on the original change systems and um, processes. So in terms of cultural change, we need to change the hearts and minds of the people. So basically that means um, the, the four main hurdles that you need to actually get across are <coughs> cognitive, people that have to understand why you need to change. Um, the limited resource we want to put all of our and doing some other exciting science or whatever, this is just boring data management. Um, motivating additional politics because the visionaries are often shot down by the people who have been doing something for a really long period time and they really understand their own bit in detail um, but they can't quite grasp it. Um, the first thing therefore you need is a really clear vision of um, why the agency has to change, what the change will look like, uh, what the future the state of the change is for. Um, this is usually involves quite a bit of extensive strategic planning and uh, design before even the uh, agency commits Science Australia, this particular uh, move towards electronic do document and data management um, with papers by consultants that went to the committee putting forward the business case for electronic data document and records management to replace our um, the paper managed system that, that was happening at the time. And then of course once the vision is in place it needs to be communicated the first place to start with the communication is with the executive. If you don't get your executive on board, there's no way you'll ever um, a change. Pretty much always involves staffing resources in, um, and uh, changes to IT, ICT systems. Uh, it's very expensive to make these sorts of change, but also to long-term resources uh, to make this change happen over the long term. Um, the way that we kept our executive engaged in continuing to um, ensure that their staff, they promote the staff all the way down through the levels from from um, division heads through group leaders, through project leaders, into the general levels of branch head or a division head would receive their trim statistics, which actually named every single person in their in their particular branch or division um, of who was using trim, who used it often, who used who didn't use it at all. The, the tend to like a little bit of um, competition and this way they were actually being forced to compete with each other on how well their particular division managed um, over a period of time. Okay, so we've got the executive on board, we have to get everybody else on board. You need to focus your energies on building um, a group of powerful people. So that'll include um, the people who are best at, at data or document management or records management or whatever the changes that you're trying to make, people who do that and, and naturally think that way in each of the um, divisions, those people over, they have a lot of influence on everybody else. So it, it's a really good place to start. Now the, the next thing, that, apart from um, communicating to people, is often facilitated or, or works through tools, some sort of tool. People maybe need to enter metadata, or in our case, they need to enter. Um, they need to use a tool to to do their electronic records. And everybody do this is to make sure that 
that didn't use the Office Suite is actually if you want Word, for example, or uh, Microsoft Excel, or whatever other, uh, or even their, their emails. Um, there's a little. Um, whenever they press save, it takes them straight into saving in Trim. They actually have to go to another step to save it elsewhere other than in Trim. So the um, actual tool for doing the thing in the right way is part of their normal everyday work practice. Not only that, Trim super containers. Um, Trim's been described as a big black hole where you just dump stuff in and you have to do these complicated searches to find anything again. If you actually put a structure of super containers into your Trim, people have um, something that actually replicates um, what they were used to doing when they were saving uh, their files um, in Windows. So the file, the Windows file structure, sort of appears in their Trim interface, showing them where their where their files are stored, and um, it doesn't interfere with the way that the Trim works or anything. Um, but you don't stop there. Um, I think how many versions we we did version changes of our electronic records and data management system to increase functionality, to increase integration, to give it a better look and feel, we, um, and to, to make it easier for people to use, and also more consistent with the way people are, are thinking in modern times. So as technology changes, we're also changing our trim to keep up. At the moment, we're considering how we're going to integrate it with social media tools, because that's just something that's starting to happen in our agency. But unless we can save our social media um, records, as you, you might um, call them, in trim, then um, we're kind of missing out there as well. So we've made uh, changes to the system in 2004, 2005, 2006, 2008, and just recently in 2012 um, to, to keep our technology up to date and the processes of how people do it, with, um, how the modern world technology is changing. In any cultural change, they talk about sticks and carrots. You really, really have to use both. Um, whatever you can think of, as a stick or whatever you can think of as a carrot. Our big winner, how we changed our agency from about 10% usage of our electronic document management and records management system to about 50 and now about 80% is um, the biggest jump was during this time when we actually had a um, people's wages increase based on the whole agency re reaching a 50% level of usage of trim over a three month period. So people weren't going to get a pay rise according in the certified agreement unless 50% of people in the agency were actually using Trim on a day-to-day -day basis to do their document and records management. I know that not all of your institutions are going to be able to do something like that, but that's one benefit of being in public service. We have really good control of um, what people do. We also have the ability in everybody's individual performance agreement, so the agreement you make for what work you're going to achieve over the year, which is assessed at the end of every year, of putting the use of Trim for record document management record keeping into that performance assessment. So there's all sorts of little ways you can um, influence what people do in their work. Um, but that's not all. A, a lot of this is actually about communication and, and learning. Um, people need to be trained, and people, they need to learn, um, understand why it's good for them and find out what they need to do. Um, and everybody learns in, in a variety of very different ways, so you do need to target all these styles of learning and communication. Overall, but what we found out and what I heard at another information management strategy conference is that it's pretty much that the people aren't going to pick something up and learn particularly well until they've had a personal experience with something themselves that's proven to them why doing it this way is actually better for them. So um, that involves a huge amount of time and interaction with people on a person-to-person -person basis. But I think we've got a slide here of what we offer in GA to target people, um, to target all the different styles of training for people um, in terms of electronic document and records management. Um, training inductions are all new stars. We grab them as they walk in the door, and I'll talk about that a bit more later on. Refreshes for current employees, one-on-one -on -one training, group training, seminars, a mandatory e-learning package that people have to go through every year. Um, information sessions, updates, it's things like you know, uh, team and and division and um, branch meetings each month. Um, and a huge amount of self-help materials in a whole variety of different formats. A 
available on the internet. So there's and and also a hard copy manual. So there's things that people can refer to if they like working through things themselves. But even that wasn't really really enough. It wasn't until we actually got a, a a girl working in the records management unit that had a, a marketing background um, from university studies. And she sort of said, well, actually, we need to think of this in a more systematic way and think of it by developing a marketing strategy to, to overcome our problems in training and getting to people. Um, and that might sound complex in that you need special um, training or whatever to be able to do that, but, but really not. It's just a way of actually thinking, what are the problems why aren't we getting to people? Um, how, how do we best get to people? Let's look at these things on an individual basis and have a look at um, who we need to target our solution to for the problem, how we could possibly fix the problem, what's the tactic to fix the problem, and um, what are the sort of reasons why this strategy might or might not work. So if you do this for um, each of your perceived problems in getting people to actually go to training, which is very, very difficult. Um, in this case, we've targeted new starters, given them a personalised email on the first day that they come to work so that they've got this really nice introduction. Here's something that's really important to work that you need to actually attend before they get swamped or overloaded with anything else. Um, then you'll actually change the culture before they learn about bad culture uh, from other members. Even more important, make sure that this, that there is an ongoing implementation. You can't make a change, you can't invest millions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in making a change. People forget. You need an, to have an implementation team that keeps the momentum going over the long term for your staff. So, um, of course, that was just our records management unit, but it was our records management unit ensuring that their focus was on supporting training and and um, building awareness continually through personal service to the agency in what they do. So they're out there all the time talking to people. The key factor we found is having really excellent personalised responsive client support. Um, anybody's having difficulties with trim or any problem at all, um, you actually proactively go out there and find their problems and identify them through some of the methods that we have of actually picking up problems, including things like audits or um, just statistics that are coming in for how many people are using this or that. Um, but your client support, each person that's involved in pushing this change through, is going to be a really key factor. And just to show how long and slow it is, I've only showed since 2007 to 2012. Remembering back in 2004, I think we had about 10% usage. It's a long, slow road, but it, even after 10 years of, of working on this whole implementation, um, it's still increasing. People are still actually using Trim for document and records management more and more across the agency. And that's me. Thank you.